Hey guys, Byron here from HobbyKing.com. I have got a new range of products to show you today from Orange RX, and this is pretty exciting. We think you guys are going to agree. So uh, you'll see in front of me here, I've got a wide range. We've actually got, uh, well, I'm showing you uh, seven different receivers, but uh, in total there's six new models, uh, which are ranging from six channel all the way up to 12 channel. And uh, there's some great new features on these V2 uh, Orange RX receivers. So um, we'll start at uh, the smaller and the lower channel counts and work our way up. Um, there's a lot of information to go over here and uh, I'm just going to tell you about uh, uh, some of the great new features on these models. So firstly, we've got the Orange RX 620X. Now you'll see I've got two here and uh, actually these two receivers as far as the functions go are almost identical. Uh, the only reason I've got two here to show you is because if we look at the back you'll see you've got a sticker. One is uh, marked CPPM, the other one is marked SBUS. So actually all of these receivers are going to be offered in two versions so each model will have a SBUS version as well as a CPPM version. So this is a really great feature because it means that you can use a single line connection uh, to most of the popular flight controllers on the market today. So things like your Nase 32, your um, you know, uh, F3, uh, a lot of the helicopter fly barless controllers, uh, they support this single line connection which uh, eliminates the need for having individual uh, uh, connection leads for all of your different channels. So it's very convenient, makes for very tidy uh, uh, wiring setup on your model. So uh, most of the flight controllers you see nowadays, uh, uh, a lot of them will support both SBUS and CPPM, but uh, the, you know, the preferred method tends to be CPPM. It's more common uh, for your uh, uh, multi-rotor flight controllers. Uh, whereas on the helis, a lot of the fly barless systems such as your V-Bar or some of the others, uh, they lean towards the SBUS side. So that's why it's great to have two options. So uh, depending on your application, you can choose the appropriate receiver for what you need. Now, uh, even on the basic model, uh, or on the uh, six channel model rather, uh, this does have dual satellite ports as well. So you can see that here. You've got standard satellite connections. So that means you can have up to two uh, additional satellite receivers on the model. So uh, right out of the box, it's going to have uh, true diversity. You've got uh, uh, two antennas basically on the, um, on the receiver that are independent. Uh, and then with the option of adding two satellites. Now each satellite receiver also has two independent antennas, true diversity. So you can have a total of up to six antennas. So it offers excellent uh, signal diversity, a very robust uh, signal for uh, models which uh, maybe have a lot of uh, metal components inside such as uh, nitro engines or gasoline powered models, this type of thing. So uh, moving along, as I mentioned, we've got quite the range here. So that's the six channel uh, uh, model you see there. We've also got seven channel, eight channel, nine, 10, and 12. Now, of course, each of these models are also offered in two versions like we talked about. One is SBUS, one is CPPM. Now, with any of these models, regardless of the channel count, you know, so you've got the, the 620, which is just uh, uh, six channels. What that's actually referring to is how many physical PWM outputs there are on the receiver. So that means that this has six physical channels that you can connect uh, to your servos or uh, whatever the device may be to. Now, but because they are CPPM capable or SBUS capable, that means that with that digital signal uh, using those protocol, it can actually output more channels than what is physically uh, on the receiver itself. Now, the difference between CPPM and SBUS, uh, there's a difference in your channel output uh, amount. So CPPM is nine channels uh, maximum and SBUS is up to 12 channels. So uh, as an example, if you have the R620X uh, SBUS version, uh, even though it only has six physical connections, if you're using it in SBUS mode, uh, you can actually control up to 12 channels on your model. So very, very good. It means you actually don't need uh, the um, higher model receiver uh, if you are using SBUS or say CPPM, if you need uh, in the CPPM case, less than nine channels. Now uh, for the other versions, of course, because we have the 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, uh, we'll take the 12 for example, this has up to 12 physical channels. So if you're not using SBUS, you're not using CPPM and you need really 12 or say uh, 11 channels uh, physically connected, uh, that's what you want. Now, one crucial feature we haven't touched on yet, which all of these receivers feature, and this is the most, uh, probably the most important feature about these receivers, is they have integrated telemetry on board, which is absolutely great. So you don't need a separate uh, telemetry module or anything like that for this to work. If you're using this with, say, a Spectrum or a JR radio that's DSM2 or DSMX uh, compatible, which has telemetry uh, features on the radio, this will bind up uh, not only the RF uh, portion, but the telemetry portion as well. And you can get uh, your full information via telemetry back to the radio. 
Now, a great thing about our Orange RX lineup, as far as the telemetry goes, is the range. Uh, you'll find on a lot of receivers, or a lot of uh, telemetry modules, uh, depending on which model it is, the range can be quite limited, sometimes 100 meters or less. But with our Orange RX lineup, it's actually up to 400 meters range without any additional equipment. So you can literally take one of these receivers, put it in your model, bind it up with your uh, telemetry capable radio, and you will have up to a 400 meter range, which is excellent. So uh, what most guys do if they're flying models, uh, which you know, they want to use telemetry on, uh, of course, in some instances, you'll be flying further away than 400 meters. But uh, any time that you need to, say, uh, check something, you want to look at your battery voltage, something like that, uh, you just need to fly the model within 400 meters uh, from yourself, and you will have that telemetry connection and instantly be able to receive an update on your radio on the current telemetry status. So that's for the telemetry range. We talked about up to 400 meters. Now, the RF signal range for control uh, is actually up to 2 kilometers, and that's for the full range, even down from the, uh, the, the 6 channel all the way up to the 12 channel. So very, very long range. It's a great feature, and that's something that you won't find on just about any other DSM-2 or DSM-X uh, capable receiver on the market today. Now, one thing we want to talk about for the Orange RX lineup that's very important, something we're very proud of, all Orange RX uh, receivers and transmitter modules are actually developed in-house by our own engineering team. We actually have engineers uh, working on RF uh, that are based in both Canada and Russia who do the, all the designs of the protocols for our Orange RX lineup. Now this is quite unique because many products that you see available now uh, working on the DSM-2 or DSM-X protocol are coming out of China. And uh, you know, for these protocols there, actually uh, most people will think it's the same because it's uh, compatible with a DSM-2 or DSM-X radio. But actually there's a lot of differences uh, in the protocols uh, depending on uh, where they're coming from. So, if you find this, if you compare some of these products uh, that are in the market today, some of the very uh, cheap products coming out of China, um, you'll actually find a lot of incompatibility issues. Uh, with some of the um, uh, newer DSM-2 or DSM-X models, say coming from uh, uh, Horizon or uh, other companies, uh, you may have certain features that don't work properly with some of the uh, DSM-2, DSM-X protocols coming out of China. So uh, we're very proud to say that with our RF engineers who have been working on this, uh, through extensive testing, we have made sure this works with any DSM-2, any DSM-X radio that's in the market currently, as well as some very unique features, such as the telemetry, which we talked about, which has up to the 400 meter range. You will not find another product in the market today with DSM-2, DSM-X compatibility that has this feature in this range. So very, very unique. Uh, also, the two kilometer range we talked about. Uh, you'll be quite hard pressed to find another receiver coming out of China in DSM-2 or DSM-X. It can boast this type of range out of the box on your uh, standard models. So uh, anyway, one other thing I want to touch on about this, we talked about the telemetry. I wanted to show you on these receivers, you can see on the left side here your uh, telemetry connection ports. Now, one of the telemetry features built in that doesn't require any external sensors is the onboard voltage measuring. So when you have your power source connected to this, whether it be a BEC from, uh, say, your ESC, or if you've got a standalone receiver pack, say, in a large model like a helicopter or maybe a large airplane, actually that, uh, that voltage will be sent back via telemetry to your radio automatically. No additional sensors required. But, of course, if you want to do uh, other things, such as monitoring your main pack voltage, uh, RPM, say for your head speed on a helicopter, uh, or temperature for your ESC, you can actually do that. And we have all the sensors available already on the website. They simply plug into the side and are ready to use. So great feature, again, right out of the box. And it's something that uh, you generally will not find on a basic uh, six-channel receiver, such as the R620X. But, of course, we offer that on the full range with the uh, new Orange RX V2 lineup. Now, two last things that we want to mention for these receivers. Uh, one is the quick recovery time uh, or brownout protection. Now, uh, most of you uh, may have ran into this case before. Or you've had a friend uh, with his model has had a brownout. So you've had uh, something happen in flight. Say, uh, you know, you're, you're flying a model and uh, the servo drain was too high, so it pulled the, uh, the pack voltage down, or you've got a, uh, maybe a faulty BEC and uh, you had a voltage drop. And what happens is on most receivers, uh, once the uh, voltage gets too low, uh, the receiver will actually lose power. And then if the voltage comes back, it'll reset. Well, in some cases, a lot of receivers, it uh, actually takes a while for it to uh, reset and reconnect. In that few seconds, as we all know, that can be enough to cause a crash. So especially if you're uh, flying low or you're flying an aerobatic model, uh, if you lose all control for, uh, for a few seconds or more, um, that's enough to uh, uh, have a total loss of the model. Now, uh, what we want to mention with this, the quick brownout recovery. Uh, actually, most brownout recoveries on these are in less than one second. And another very unique thing about this is, is that if these receivers do lose power in flight, uh, 
for you know uh, whatever reason uh, you have a brownout issue uh, actually for that moment when the power is gone uh, these receivers will go to fail safe mode so if you're using uh, analog servos for example uh, you you may have seen before if you uh, lose your signal or you know lose power for the receiver servos will go crazy and this uh, almost always ends up uh, badly ends up in a crash uh, but with our receivers if they do lose power you're using those analog servos actually they will go to neutral positions like a fail safe and they will remain at that position until the power comes back and again as I mentioned if you have a quick dip in voltage something like that uh, and experience that brownout condition uh, if it's uh, within a second the receiver will reconnect uh, within one second and uh, you have a much better chance of recovering your model now talking about that for the brownout protection uh, just one last thing we want to mention is the voltage range so these receivers can actually handle down to about 3.2 volts it's about the limit there before um, uh, you may run into issues with a, uh, a reset and uh, the maximum voltage is up to 9.6 volts uh, another thing is that uh, what's really common now uh, especially on the, the large models or say your uh, large helicopter models most guys are running HV setups now so they want to run HV servos uh, they want to eliminate uh, uh, BECs on their models they just want to have straight direct voltage from a two cell lithium battery. This is no problem. A fully charged two cell lithium battery is about 8.4 volts. This is no problem. So this can connect directly to the receiver. You're still well under the 9.6 volt threshold. Uh, so works perfectly there, no issues. So anyway, guys, that is the new Orange RX V2 lineup. I know it's a lot to take in, a lot of new features there, but there'll be more information on the website in the product listing, giving all details and specs for each receiver. And as we talked about, remember the key features, the new telemetry up to 400 meters, all receivers have up to a two kilometer RF signal range and uh, CCPPM S bus. So two different versions for each model. So just choose the one appropriate for your application. Okay guys, so be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already done so, so you can keep up to date with all the other new product videos like these. And once again, thanks for watching.